Did you know cloud storage can offer so much more than just a space to back up your vacation photos? After years of testing cloud services and helping thousands of users optimize their digital lives, I've discovered there's some seriously powerful ways to get the most out of cloud storage. Many you may not even know about. In this video, I'm spilling the secrets and sharing the best ways cloud storage can transform how you work, create, and share in the digital world. Whether you're a student, professional, creative, or just someone living in the digital world, stick around because these aren't just theoretical concepts. I'm giving you real, actionable strategies that will improve your digital life. You know that feeling when you're working from a cafe and suddenly you realize the file you need is stuck on your home computer? Yeah, that's exactly what we're going to eliminate. This setup is perfect for digital nomads, remote workers, or anyone tired of guessing which device has the file you need. I've been using this use case for, oh my God, years now, and it's practically eliminated those oh no moments when switching to other devices. pCloud stands as my top recommendation here and for good reason. Its virtual drive feature is among the best desktop cloud storage apps I've used. It shows all your files in your computer but only downloads them when you need them. Imagine having a two terabyte hard drive that weighs nothing and fits in your pocket. That's basically how a virtual drive works. The virtual drive integrates directly with your operating systems file explorer, making it feel like a native part of your computer. You'll want to set up your main work folder structure in pCloud Drive, then use its selective sync feature to keep your most used files locally available. The real game changer is its block level sync. A good example is when you edit, for example, a huge Photoshop file, right? These files can get really large if you work with multiple layers. pCloud only uploads the changed portions. Or if you're working on a, say, one gigabyte video project file and make a small, tiny edit, it might only need to sync a few megabytes instead of the entire file every time you make a change. pCloud may be the best option, but there are other alternatives. Mega is one to consider, and it could be better in certain scenarios and Mega Sync Client is, in my opinion, remarkably robust and it offers generous storage quotas, plus its end-to-end -end encryption is baked into everything by default. However, Mega falls short of pCloud in two crucial areas. Its virtual drive implementation isn't really as smooth and its block level sync isn't as efficient. I've noticed Mega sometimes need to re-upload entire files when pCloud would only sync the changes. That said, if privacy is your absolute top priority, Mega Zero Knowledge Encryption comes included on all plans and pCloud asks you to pay extra. That's a little bit of a bummer in my book. For creators like me, like maybe you who's watching this video, it's essential you can show off your work as quickly and as easily as possible. Cloud Storage helps you do this with syncing and sharing capabilities. Now, these are crucial for photographers, designers, or any creative professional who needs to quickly share different versions of their portfolio with clients. I learned that the hard way that manually updating a portfolio of sites or sending massive email attachments just doesn't really cut it anymore. No client really wants to open big attachments and they just delete it or it doesn't even get delivered to their inbox. Now, there's one provider and that provider is called sync.com who absolutely dominates this use case, mainly because in my opinion, they've nailed the perfect balance between sharing features and security. The zero knowledge encryption means your unreleased work stays private but its sharing features are still incredibly flexible. Plus, they don't compress your files like some other services, which is crucial when you're sharing high resolution work. Here's how to make the most out of Sync's features. Create a main portfolio folder with subfolders for different types of work. You can generate different links for the same files with different permissions. Think one link for viewing, another for downloading, each with its own password and expiry date. Now the preview feature works with practically every file format so clients can check out your work without downloading anything and here, is a pro tip. Use its download tracking feature to see when clients actually view your work. It's like read receipts for your portfolio. So you don't have to 
send emails <laughs> to clients asking, hey, did you get the file? Did you open the file? You can really see it. That's kind of sneaky, right? Now, PayCloud comes in as a strong second choice here, and some creators might actually prefer it. Its preview features are argu arguably better than those of Sync.com, especially for video content, and its built-in media player, in my opinion, is just fantastic. On the other side, PCloud's sharing features are slightly less granular, if you will. You can set as many detailed permissions per shared link, and that said, if you're primarily sharing video content or need better media playback features, PCloud might be worth considering despite these limitations. Let's talk about taming the digital beast that is your media collection. I'm looking at you. I know, <laughs> it's a bunch of mess, like mine. <laughs> if you're anything like me, you've got photos from multiple phones, videos scattered across hard drives from decades ago, depending how old you are, and music files that might as well be playing hide and seek. And this setup isn't just about storage, it's about creating a self-organizing easy to maintain system that makes your media actually usable. And trust me, I've seen it transform chaotic collections into streamlined libraries after setting this up for countless photographers and video creators, and also obviously for myself. Mega emerges as the surprising champion here, and I'll tell you why. They're among the most generous in terms of store to price ratio among secure providers. And seriously, I mean, try getting 16 terabyte anywhere else for these prices. And its built-in media player isn't just a fancy add-on, it's practically and actually useful. But the real kicker, its sync client works exceptionally well when configured correctly. Here's where Mega's magic happens. Its camera upload feature can be tweaked to monitor any folder, not just your camera roll, set it up to watch your media folders, and its automatic sorting features will organize files by date and type. Its preview generator creates thumbnails for everything automatically, making browsing your library feel like scrolling through Netflix rather than digging through file names. And you know me, Here's a pro tip. If you have a house full of people, use its bandwidth limiter to upload only during off-peak hours. This way, no one will complain to you when their videos keeps buffering, when your daughter watches Netflix or whatnot. iStrive, here's another provider that you wanna maybe look into when browsing through the cloud search options, steps up as a compelling alternative. And honestly, it's it almost took the crown here at the CloudWords offices. Its two-fish encryption is more sophisticated than Mega's approach, mainly due to its complex encryption key design, which many say is harder for cyber attackers to break through. Plus, iStrive has a gorgeous interface. However, they fall short in two crucial areas. Its sync client isn't quite as robust as Mega. Sometimes it needs a little gentle prod to keep working, and it has fewer overall features than Mega. That said, if you're working with a smaller media library and value aesthetic experience over file syncing, iStrive might be your perfect match. If you've ever found yourself drowning in a sea of project files, this one's for you. This use case isn't just about sharing files, it's about creating a fully inclusive workspace where everything stays organized. Dropbox is a solid choice if you use its built-in paper app. Paper combined with Dropbox's flexible folder structure makes organization a breeze. Sure, Google Drive exists, but Dropbox handling of large files and complex folder structures does a much better job and is more applicable to different types of teams. And let's get to the nitty gritty here. You can take full advantage of Dropbox's smart sync feature by combining it with its granular permission system. Set up project folders with specific sharing settings for different team members. Contractors can access only their relevant folders while team leads get full access. And best of all, its version history tracks every change without counting it against your storage quota. Google Workspace, formerly G Suite, comes in a as a strong contender, and for some teams, it might actually be the better choice. Its real-time collaboration features are unmatched. Watching multiple people edit a document simultaneously never gets old, and we use it here at CloudWords all the time. I mean, we work with sometimes 20 different people on one document, so this really helps of keeping track and know who did the change on a document. If you haven't had this experience in Google Docs, which is unlikely, you should definitely check it out. There are 
some loose points in two critical areas, which is file versioning isn't obviously as comprehensive as Dropbox's, and its storage management can get messy with shared drives. That said, if your team lives and breathes do Google Docs, like mine, the tight integration might outweigh these limitations. So in a lot of cases, it will be a hybrid solution. You may use Dropbox for your larger video files and then Google Drive for your document files. You may go to pCloud for its virtual drive feature or use iStrive because it's just much more pretty. It really depends on you. Now, for my code warriors out there, this one is going to change your life. Whether or not you're just talking about syncing your code, we're talking about maintaining your entire development environment from IDE configurations to project dependencies. And after seeing this setup for several development teams, I can tell you that it almost entirely eliminates those dreaded works on my machine moments. And pCloud takes another crown here, primarily because of its excellent handling of symbolic links and lightning fast sync for small files. When you're dealing with thousands of config files and dependencies, that speed difference really saves time over the long haul. And plus, its Linux support is rock solid, which is crucial for developers who live in that Linux environment. The implementation here is where things get really interesting. Use pCloud's sync feature for your entire development folder structure, but be smart about it. Exclude node modules and other generated folders using its ignore patterns. pCloud's version history becomes your backup time machine for those it worked yesterday moments. And the game changer is using its API to automate backups of your database dumps and environment variables. Just remember to encrypt sensitive files using its client encryption feature. Pro tip, set up a separate sync folder for your IDE configurations and use symbolic links to keep everything in sync across machines. Amazon Web Services, or AWS, steps up as a worthy alternative here. And for some developers, it might be the better choice. Its range of services, scalability, and developer tools are true strengths of the service. However, for small developers and projects, AWS might be more than you need. Plus, if you never really use AWS, there, there is a quite steep learning curve, which is not the case for pCloud. AWS is super complicated, and also, if you configure it wrong, it can be very expensive. Some people have to, have to pay thousands and thousands of dollars in AWS server costs because they just forgot to set a check mark in a certain location. So beware when using Amazon AWS or any paid cloud storage service, for that matter, that bills essentially by the gigabyte. Remember. The goal isn't to completely overhaul your digital life overnight. It's about gradually, slowly, but surely building a system that works for you. And don't worry if you need to adjust these use cases to fit your specific needs. That's exactly what you should do. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button and subscribe for more cloud storage tips and tricks. And also drop a comment below letting me know which use case you're most excited to try out. And if you have your own clever ways of using cloud storage, share those too. I love learning from this community. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.